do you believe in spectral phenomena? Well, there is a spectrum of state management that developers believe in, where you have to choose between scalable but boilerplate or less scalable but minimal. Redux is scalable, and Jotai is minimal. But this spectrum isn't real, because StateAdapt is both more scalable than Redux and more minimal than Jotai. I converted three apps from Jotai to StateAdapt and saw an average reduction of code of 25%. The data flow also became more unidirectional, but I'll talk about that later. So first, the question, how exactly did the code become more minimal? Jotai uses atoms to manage state. I love how simple they are. You just pass in an initial state, and you can read and write to that state. But if you're in a component, you have to call the useSetAtom hook. It returns a function, which you can then use to update the atom state. But StateAdapt doesn't have this extra step. It uses stores instead of atoms, and you can directly change stores. In the Wordle clone, this accounted for about seven lines of code that got deleted, and it played a role in pretty much all the apps. My favorite thing about Jotai is how it handles derived states. Rather than having to define dependencies up front, like in reselect or rxjs, you just use the atoms you need in the expression itself. I love this. It's actually pretty similar to signals. However, there are two kinds of derived states, view and model. View derived states are concerned with presentation and belong close to or in components. Fine-grained or atomic derived states are perfect for this because the UI code is spread out and the syntax needs to be really flexible and decoupled from other derived states. Model derived states are concerned with more abstract data and tend to be centered around a specific type. If you have a list of items, a derived items count makes sense to put nearby. StateAdapt uses state adapters to group reusable state logic relevant to a type. This includes state changes and derived states. When you create a store, you can give it an adapter to manage that state with. This means one adapter can be reused in multiple stores. Now all of that state change logic contained in that adapter becomes available in both stores. Now you can call the state change functions on a store or use its selectors. Another benefit of adapters is join adapters. We've all written a toggle state change function for Booleans, but why? Isn't this a solved problem by now? Most of the work is actually the spread syntax to get to the property that needs to be toggled. Join adapter solves this by allowing you to write a, an adapter for a simple state and then reuse it for properties of a larger state. The result is a new adapter that extends the state change functions and selectors from each properties adapter. The new adapter has all the same functionality as the adapter from the previous code. And the type inference is actually really awesome because I love pain. Anyway, so create adapter and join adapters accounted for Quite a few lines of code reduced in the Red3 app and the Chloromaps app. Um, more so the Chloromaps app. Uh, the Red3 app, more code was reduced because of join stores. Join stores lets you derive state from multiple stores. I designed it to use the same syntax as join adapters in case you want to switch between them. But rather than defining a join state type and passing it in, join stores infers a new state type based on the stores you pass in. And join stores will actually create this state if you ask for it. Here, I'm asking for the, that state as an observable on the combined store from uh, calling join stores. This is the Red3 app. Um, and this became useful in a very unexpected way in this app. I haven't really used this much before, but this is the Red3 app. I'm not really sure exactly what it does, um, but you like it draws paths on on like a canvas or something um anyway so what they were doing in this app is they had a lot of atoms they had eight atoms and each of them was calling a 
a save callback function. And this save was calling a debounced function that would collect all of the atoms states and uh, collect them into an object um, and then save them in local storage for next time the page loaded. So it just happened to be that this uh, the way that stores are combined in state adapt produced something that was the exact shape it needed to be for this app. So that actually reduced at least 20 lines of code in this application. Um, yeah, but join stores, this is the way to create derived state with join stores. And the syntax for, for join adapters is the same as this. You do the initial call and pass in um, the the stores. Uh, okay, and then uh, it's like a builder pattern where you sub, uh, keep calling that function that gets returned until you pass nothing in and then it returns the uh, completed store. Uh, but at each layer, you're allowed to define a new selector or multiple selectors, and they can reference the selectors created in the previous uh, layers of this. So I already had to do this to create the derived states, and it was just one extra step to join these together to create uh, the exact shape that was needed for local storage. And since we're looking at this, uh, it's a good time to bring up RxJS. State Adapt is built on top of RxJS because RxJS is an extremely powerful library to enable reactive programming. And nothing is more unidirectional than reactive programming. RxJS is the most unidirectional library in existence. So um, it comes with a bunch of cool utilities like debounce time. Um, so this saved some time. Uh, I, was, I was able to just have one line of code here. It was easy to add. Um, this The person who did this before had implemented their own debounce utility, and so I didn't have to do that. So before they had to set their own callback function before passing it to the component to call this and then call the debounce separately. Um, but now in uh, the stated app version, uh, you just call dot next at the top of a stream, and then the debou debounce is something that happens uh, downstream from that. So new tolerance. Uh, this is the uh, the source that that gets the, the new value pushed into it, and then you can just take that and debounce that on top of that, um, and it like doesn't even take its own line of code. So RxJS can minimize can can make your code way more minimal than if you don't use it, and it also makes it more unidirectional. Let's talk about unidirectionality. Unidirectional data flow is the opposite of MVC. MVC stands for model view controller. The model is like state, so let's say that's items. The view is component, so let's say cart. And what is the controller? Well, I would argue that a controller is something that controls things. In this case, it's going to be an event handler. So add to cart, maybe. Um, okay, so let's say the user is going to click the Add to Cart button, and so that will be uh, a call to there, and Add to Cart is going to update the items. It's controlling the item state, and let's say when it does that, it has to also update a total, and let's add a total with tax after that. And of course, the component needs to display those states. Okay, but now we need to implement some more uh, functionality. So let's say there's another controller, uh, remove from cart and change quantity. So a lot of things happening here, a bunch of controllers and a lot of them all updating the same state. This is how MVC traditionally works. Here's a question. Where's the logic for calculating the total and the total with tax? You'd hope that somebody extracted it to a shared utility function, but you know what? There's no guarantee. It might be and often is duplicated across a bunch of event handlers. Okay, here's an extremely simple example of what this code might look like. Nine simple lines of code. If you're a React or a Svelte developer, you might be thinking this is trivial, but just imagine that this is shared state. Yeah. 
So this has an event handler controlling multiple states, so this is MVC. Um, how do we make it unidirectional? We need to introduce reactivity with maybe ArcsJS or signals or selectors, atoms, whatever. But I'm going to do signals. So first, let's replace the initial thing with uh, create signal. Um, so now we've got items and set items. And now we can use that down there. Now we can set items and pass in the new item there. Okay, now is the interesting part. In the declaration of each piece now, each piece of state, we need to reference what it needs. So here we are creating a memo and we are taking the items, we're calling those because this is SolidJS uh, syntax, um, and we are reducing and this is the logic for calculating a total. And because this is declared in place, we can now remove that down there. And then we just repeat for total with tax. And there we go. Each state is now referencing what it needs on its own to determine its value throughout time. Now the logic is co-located where it's relevant. Why was a function called add to cart concerned with taxes? It doesn't make sense, but it makes perfect sense that a variable called total with tax has a tax rate in its declaration. And if we had the other event handlers, we would not be able to duplicate any logic because that logic is co-located with the state itself and there's not even a temptation to copy and paste and, and forget to uh, extract the shared logic. See how many arrows merge when we make our state management more reactive. Here's a component in the Chloromaps app where uh, you have a controller that's copied in two different files. This is the exact same code. Um, and when I moved it downstream, I literally couldn't do this because they were going to be in the same place. They couldn't have the same name. And I had to remove some duplicated code. So this accounted for a lot of the lines of code removed, putting things more downstream, making things more unidirectional. I did this with a few functions. Here's another one. The interesting thing about this one is they're actually different from each other. And I did notice a few that were that had slight differences. And these actually are equivalent. It's just that they were made different. So over time, your duplicate code will uh, deviate and get harder and harder to fix. Sometimes this actually can cause a bug. So when your code is co-located by what it's relevant to, you'll be able to see discrepancies and iron them, iron them out and remove um, duplicate code if, if possible. I want to draw attention to the color of the arrows here. I'm, I colored the arrow by where, it where the line of code was that was creating the relationship. So green means the cart itself was referencing these uh, states and drive states. Um, the yellow, orange, and red arrows here meant that these controllers were referencing the items and controlling them. And when I changed it to derived state, when I pushed the logic downstream, total now contained the code and reference items by itself. And same with total with tax. Now just from this, can you tell why we're not completely unidirectional yet? We still have controllers and they're still modifying external states. So the original Flux and, and React talk talked about external control being a source of bugs. And the truth is we have logic that's scattered in different controllers um, that's all controlling the same state. So unidirectional state management isn't just about derived states. It's about the state itself. And this is what's missing from so many state management libraries. The point of Flux and Redux, the, the point was never really fully absorbed by people. Let's make our state reactive too. Let's show three controllers with 19 lines of code. And I'll use state adapt. SolidJS and Jotai don't support this and Redux would be too much code. First, we make a store. Then we put the add logic inside of it and we can remove it 
now to make space. Um, and we need a simple event source for adding. And we need to reference that in the store. Now the store is going to listen to that and and change when it emits. Um, and this sources object is equivalent of a Redux reducer. The logic is in the adapter, so it can be easily reused in multiple stores. But the thing that actually causes the store to change is that sources object. So that should be thought of as the reducer. And now we need to get the, the signal from the store. In the future, I'll add better utilities for solid, but this is what I have for now. And let's just skip to the end. So that's what it looks like. It's a little more syntax than before, but I chose this syntax uh, for what I'm going to show next. But the main thing is now all the change logic is co-located in the store. It moved downstream from event handlers to the state's declaration. If there was duplicate logic or bugs from inconsistencies, we could easily see them. And this is the entire reason Flux was created. I feel like the industry didn't actually uh, absorb why Flux was created, what the entire point of it was. But this is why, co-location. So this is more scalable than Jotai or Vanilla Solid, and it's about the same lines of code as before. And here's how the diagram of the data flow changes. Notice the arrow is going to items change color. That's to show now that they're kind of the pink purple color. Um, that it's the items declaration that's referencing those event sources. So it's in control now. But it's also even more unidirectional than Redux because the store is referencing the observables so we can have declarative side effects too. Imagine we have to call a server to add items. We'll change the add source to a regular subject, uh, then define a source that includes the side effect and reference that in the store. Okay, let's simplify this diagram. Okay, now the diagram looks like this. With RxJS, not only can state be downstream from events, but events can be downstream from other events. Now, every single variable here, every single uh, declaration is referencing what it needs by itself. All the arrows that are going downstream are the color of the thing they're pointing to, except for one, that uh, that green arrow from cart to add. If you want that to be orange, uh, you need a framework called CycleJS. But usually it's not that important because these are uh, DOM events that are really easy for developers to track. So yeah, but just look how satisfying that would be. That would be awesome. Anyway, so yeah, state adapt is more unidirectional than Redux. It's more minimal than Jotai. And this trade-off isn't real. In fact, the only way to be really minimal is to also be unidirectional. But to be clear, Jotai is an awesome state management library. I love the way it does drive states. Atoms are awesome. Um, uh, it, Jotai is going to be a lot more stable, refined, and it's more popular. Um, if you use state adapt, uh, you have to be okay with, with opening issues occasionally, and I will fix them as soon as possible, but it is production ready. Um, it's just not going to be as refined as Jotai. And, uh, the bundle size will be a bit bigger. I think it's around 10 kilobytes with, with state adapt versus, I don't know, maybe one or two with Jotai. Uh, which, if you use React, you have to pretend to care about that. And if you use uh, Solid or Svelte, you may actually care about that. But uh, over time, I hope to uh, refine it. But at least it's a way to code declaratively in a minimal way. So I hope you give it a try, at least for a side project. And I hope you open issues if you find anything that nobody else has found yet. So, yeah, thanks for watching. And let me know what you... What you uh, Find out. Thanks.